as promised I am going to show you some aspects of the tracking generator of the Rigel DSA 815-TG which is an inexpensive spectrum analyzer that has been put on the market in recent times. This is a crystal filter from uh, Mtron PTI and it's uh, at 157.125 megahertz it's designed for the front end of a commercial two-way radio uh, or repeater to get rid of um, any other challenges, shall we say, to the frequency that might be on either side of this frequency. It's got 50 ohms in and 50 ohms out as seen by the end connectors. And let's uh, first set up the analyzer for that purpose. We'll set the frequency, center frequency is now at 750. We'll set it to 157.1250 megahertz. All right. Set the span for this is only about 50 kilohertz uh, wide at the bottom, so we'll make it uh, 200 kilohertz for the span. 200 kilohertz. Now I've got this set up for automatic operation. As you notice, the noise level has dropped down quite far. Zero to about minus 85 dBm on the peaks here. Alright, let's turn on the tracking generator, which is right here. And the level's at uh, minus 20, so let's set that at minus 10. So 10 Wait a second. Amplitude. Get the right thing here. Uh, tracking generator. Level. 10 minus dBm. That'll put the tracking generator right about here. Uh, but let's see first by turning it on to see how much we have uh, leakage at this frequency. So the tracking generator is now on. Ah, yeah. so we have we have some leakage getting across. Nothing's attached here or here. I can even put a load on here, and it doesn't make any difference. I can put a load on here. So that's internal leakage, but it's at minus 78 dBm. So for the moment, we'll ignore that. We need some cables to hook in and out of the uh, crystal filter with. First we'll find out what the loss through our cables is here. Both of these on. Here's my two ends. Right now there's no real problem of leakage through the cables, apparently. We'll put the uh, end barrel here. It's female, female, male barrel. And screw the other side on. Should go to minus 10. Might be a little less than minus 10 because there might be loss in the cable and connectors, but looks pretty close to that. Like peak detector says that it's minus 9.66 dBm. So, close enough. <laughs> now let's put the crystal, uh, crystal filter in there. Input and output in this case doesn't really matter. And there we go. Now, one reason I put this at minus 10 was that the crystal filter itself at 0 dBm is going to have some strange behavior, potentially. And in fact, uh, these crystal filters at plus 3 to plus 10 dBm, somewhere in that range, can actually break. You have to be very careful when you use this kind of a filter um, in front of a radio because you might have 
circumstances where too much signal from some other transmitter on a tower, for example, or a nearby neighbor as far as a ham is concerned, a ham radio operator, um, you might, you know, have a problem with this kind of a filter. But generally speaking, you try to get rid of signals that strong anyway, just so you can receive the signals you desire better, which is one reason to use the filter. Let's uh, put a marker on the peak here. And it's now minus 14.7. So we went from minus uh, 9.6, I think it was, to minus 14.7. So uh, there you go. We have in the neighborhood of 6 dB of loss through this filter, which is not uncommon for a filter of this type. All right. Let's, uh, for convenience, I'm going to just lay this here. And uh, let's see what we've got in terms of a frequency response on this unit. I've already got this thing on the peak. The peak is uh, 157.1256, pretty close to where you want it to be. And we are going to uh, now find out where the 3 dB points are by taking the marker and going to delta which means from this point to wherever I go, it'll give me the difference between the two. We want the 3 dB point, so I'll just crank it down to the 3 dB point. And it looks like about 10 kilohertz down on that side. and about uh, 14 kilohertz on that side. The spec, as can be seen on this chart, actually indicates it should be plus and minus 30 maximum at 20 dB. It doesn't give a 3 dB corner. So let's go to 20 and see what we get. That's about as close as I can get. It's plus 23, which is uh, Definitely within the 30 kilohertz. And it's minus 20, which is definitely within the plus and minus 30 kilohertz. Back to the chart, at 50 kilohertz we should be 40 dB down. So let's see what happens at 40 dB down. Uh, excuse me. Yes, 40 dB down at 50 kilohertz. Very close there. And with 32 on that side, certainly better than 50. On the upper side, We are 30, 39, call it, and that's definitely uh, better than uh, 50 kilohertz. So this crystal filter meets the criteria uh, on its spec. You also notice that uh, it, its ultimate is, oh, let's see, on this side looks like we had a spurious peak here. That's 50 dB down. This is uh, 60 some odd dB. Now I'm measuring relative to the peak here. That's what really counts. On this side, we're kicking around 57, 58 uh, down from uh, the peak. Now, I say that this uh, is doing quite well, in this band at least, for doing a sweep of this kind of a filter. And uh, so this tracking generator is working well. And I'm using 200 kilohertz here uh, span, so this is uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's 
uh, 100 kilohertz up and this is 100 kilohertz down from this center frequency. As you see anything that's on the sides of this filter is not going to get through to the receiver in a crowded uh, tower site somewhere or if there's a neighbor nearby unless he's actually radiating energy at those frequencies which is possible and then of course no filtering of any kind is going to help you. Now that's one simple demonstration of how the DSA815 works at least at the uh, 150 megahertz region.